Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where in the world you're tuning in from. If this is your first time here to fellowship with us, I want to welcome you to the Sanctuary of Manor from Heaven Ministries. I'm Overseer Michael Armstrong, and you're in the place to be. Why? Because this is the place where the Spirit of the Lord dwells. And where the Spirit of the Lord dwells, that means there's liberty. You can lift your hands, you can open your mouth, you can give God a shout of praise, you can say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Whether or not you realize it, we just crossed over into the second half of this year, as of this moment right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So if you never praise the Lord. If you didn't have time yet, you still got time. If you're sitting here and you're waiting on God to do some things, you still got things to do yourself. Amen. This is it. We are here. This year is almost over as of right now. So that's a reason to give God some praise. No matter what it was, the, the triumphs, the, the, the uh, hilltops, the valleys, the mountains, wherever it was, God has brought you thus far. Amen. So just thank him where you are right now. Just lift your hands. Just open your mouth. Give God a shout of praise and say thank you, Jesus, because nobody was able to do it for you but the Lord himself. And God didn't bring you this far just to lead you by yourself but there's still a great thing that he's looking to do through you in you amen amen you're waiting on God to do some things and God is waiting on you because he wants to do some things through you amen amen I want to welcome our family members that, that think not of themselves to come to fellowship with us from around the world we thank God for our family members that tune in from uh, the continent of Africa, from all the way down to South Africa, from Cape Town, South Africa, Pretoria, South Africa, Johannesburg. We thank God for you. We thank God for our family members that tune in from Lusaka, Zambia. Those that are coming in from Uganda. Those that are coming. Yes, Uganda. Kampala, Uganda. Uh, we thank God for you. We thank God. From uh, Mobasa, Kenya. From Nairobi, Kenya. We thank God for you. We haven't forgotten you over there in Nairobi. Uh, excuse me. In, in, in uh, uh, Nigeria. In Lagos, Nigeria. We haven't forgotten you. Those of you in the, on the western side of Africa, in Ghana, we haven't forgotten Ghana, the Volta region, we haven't forgotten you. We haven't forgotten you in Accra. We haven't forgotten you. Amen. We thank God for our family members in Zimbabwe. We thank God for you. Amen. Listen, you're tuning in right now. If it's on the uh, on the country of the Philippines, we thank God for you. We thank God for those that are tuning in right now from the uh, country of Jamaica, from Portland, Antonio, Jamaica, from Portland, Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica, Spanish Town, Jamaica. We thank God for you. Australia, Sydney, Australia, Brisbane, Australia. We thank God. Listen, I know you could be doing something different right now, but you thought not of yourself to come to fellowship with us here, and there's a life-changing word that you're going to receive here today. Amen. Oh, North America, you haven't been forgotten from Canada all the way down here to where I am in Florida. You have not been forgotten. Amen. So we thank God for you. Far east is New York City. Far west is California. We thank God for you. We thank God. Listen, I don't want to delay your time. Your time is valuable to you as it is to me. Excuse me. As it is to me. So what I want to do right now is I want to open us up with a word of prayer. And I'm just going to get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit do what he does in this atmosphere. May he use me mighty way today to bring this word of God into your home where you are today. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for you. We thank God. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just lift our hands. We lift our hearts. We open our mouths. We give you praise, Lord. We come right now with the... um spirit of thanksgiving, Father. We come with our, our, our hands lifted up, with our mouth full of praise to give you thanks, Lord, for the things that you have done in our lives, for the things that you're yet to do, that we're holding on, Father, believing in your word that these things shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. You told us to write the vision, make it plain, though it may tarry, wait for it. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We're waiting, Father. We're waiting on you to continue to do what you said you were going to do in our lives. We're thanking you right now, Father, for bringing us thus far. Even though this year is not over, Lord, it's halfway there, but we're still pressing on. We're still believing you. We're still trusting you. We're still looking to you from where all our help comes. I pray right now, Father, as this word goes forward, that the backslider nearest to hell will come back home, Father, for 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 uh, uh, those who have been downtrodden, those who have been broken. May this word heal you. May this word lift you up. May those, those who have been held captive, may this word set you free. Those who are spiritually blind, may you be able to see through this word. Those who are spiritually deaf, may you hear the voice of God through this vessel and know that the Lord has loved you from the very beginning, from before you were in your mother's womb. He said he knows the plans that he has for you. Hallelujah. So we thank you right now, Jesus, that your plans are still being carried out on behalf 
behalf of these your children. Father, let me decrease now as you increase. Hide me behind thy cross, O Lord, that you may use me now for the purpose that I've been created. Father, let me speak life into these your children. Let me speak healing into these your children. Let me speak your word into these vessels, Father, who thought not of themselves to assemble this day to hear from heaven. Meet their need, Lord, according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus, that they may know that they've been in the presence of the true and living God. Father, in all these things, we're mindful to give you praise. We give you the honor and we glorify you for there is no God greater than our God. You're Jehovah God all by yourself and we bless you and we praise you and we thank you for your omnipresence which is in our room right now. In Christ Jesus name we give you praise, honor and glory. Amen, amen and amen again. Amen again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody just ought to be excited about God, what he's doing in this season, what he's doing right now and this, listen, as I just told you, this year is almost over. As of now, we could sit here and say that. We, before, we were just in the beginning of a brand new year. Now we're getting ready to go on the downside of that year. We're getting ready to break open uh, uh, 2025, and there's going to be some festive things going on. I know God, if you're waiting on God to do some things, God is waiting on you to do the same things that you're asking him to do. You got to step out and do something too. Now, don't think everything is on God. God did what he was supposed to do. Now it's what your turn to do something that you promised to God. Amen? Amen. So again, I thank you for coming to fellowship with us here. I'm not going to delay your time. As you can see, I'm in my celebratory uh, vestment garments. Uh, we will be dining at the Lord's table today. So there's a lot that needs to get said and such a little bit of time to do it so that we can still break bread at the Lord's table. Amen. Amen. Is anybody excited about being in the presence of the Lord today other than myself? Hallelujah. I thank you. I see your, your timing in right now and I thank you for it. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. All right, listen, I want to open us up with our opening scripture. Um, it's going to be Psalm 27 verse 6. I'm going to read it to you from the King James Version. Now, I know some of you is taking it back and you say, Overseer, you usually give us uh, uh, something from the New American Standard Bible. Yes, I'm going to be all over uh, different uh, versions of the Bible, but it's still the same word of God. We're going to hear what God wants us to hear through his word, and we're going to take this word, I hope you do, and apply it to your life so that you can get the results out of it that God intends for you to get. Amen? Amen. So our opening scripture is going to come from Psalm 27, verse 6 from the King James Version, and it reads as this, And now shall my head be lifted up above my, above my enemies round about me. Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. The word of God is blessed. The children of God are blessed. And I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to use me to minister his word unto you today. In Christ Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, listen. Today, I want to speak to you from the theme of the tabernacle of praise. The tabernacle of praise. Now listen, I, I, I don't want to... You know, usually I want to tell you about some lot of things and majority of the times you may sit there and think I'm picking on you or you may think he's just talking about me. But I don't want to open this up and, and start talk, uh, making you feel or having you think that I'm talking about you. But if you allow me to be transparent with you as I open this message up to you, allow me to share with you what I would consider to be my testimony. Amen. Uh, 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 and if it sounds like uh, uh, when you hear me give you this testimony, if it sounds like some of the previous titles of the messages uh, that were just spoken uh, here from this pulpit during the past few weeks, then I want to thank you for riding out with me during these past few weeks. Amen. So if you hear these titles uh, 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 during my testimony, then I know that you know that we have rode out these few weeks here together. Amen. Amen. So listen, when uh, 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 when the scales fell from my eyes, when the scales fell from my eyes, I, I caught the revelation and I found out that I was revival. I said, I'm revival. And then I learned that not only am I revival, but I learned how to energize my spirit. Uh, uh, when my spiritual batteries began to get low, if you would allow me to say so, when my spiritual batteries began to run low, I found out not only am I revival, but I also found that there's a way that I can uh, uh, energize energize my spirit. I had to learn to energize my spirit. But the most important thing that I was revealed to me was the tabernacle of praise. There's a tabernacle of praise. And, and that's what today's message is called. It's the tabernacle of praise. Now listen to this. Uh, uh, during the days of King David, there were two tabernacles. Uh, the Bible tells us that there was one in Gibeon and then there was another one in Jerusalem. And in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, 
uh, from the New American, uh, excuse me, this is going to be from the NIV version. From the uh, NIV, uh, 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 1 Chronicles chapter 16 speaks about both of them. Now, the tabernacle in Gibeon, uh, uh, which was the tabernacle of Moses, it was a, a place of sacrifice. This tabernacle was a place of sacrifice. There's a difference. Listen to this. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses uh 16, 39 through 40 from the NIV, it says this. Then David, excuse me, David left Zodak, the priest, uh, and his fellow priests before the tabernacle of the Lord at the high place in Gibeon to present burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of burnt offering regularly in the morning and in the evening in accordance with everything written in the law of the Lord which he had given Israel. The Bible lets us know that David, hallelujah, he left Zodak. Zodak was a priest and David left him and the other priests that were there. He left them at this tabernacle, this high, uh, 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 high place in Gibeon. He left them there to present burnt offerings to the Lord on an altar or, 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 or burnt offerings. And they did this regularly. The Bible says that they left this, all, this uh, offering uh, regularly in the morning and in the evening in accordance to everything that was written in the law of the Lord, which he had given Israel. Now, the tabernacle uh, that was in Jerusalem that was the tabernacle of David. Now keep in mind, uh, uh, the first tabernacle in Gibeon, that was the tabernacle that belonged to Moses. It was set up after Moses, if you will allow me to say it in that way. Uh, but the tabernacle in Jerusalem, it was different. Why? Because the tabernacle in uh, uh, Jerusalem was the tabernacle of David. And now in the tabernacle that uh, that David had set up, this tabernacle had Levitical singers uh, that David had appointed to minister before the ark of God. And in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 4 from the Amplified, it reads as such. He appointed, he talking about David, he appointed some of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and to profess God's name and to give and to thank and praise the Lord of the God of Israel. Okay, listen. The Bible is telling us that here in uh, uh, Jerusalem was the Ark of David. And David, hallelujah, he had appointed certain members of the Levites. The Levites was a, 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 another uh, um, part of the tribes, the 12 tribes. But there was a tribe of Levites and David had appointed certain members of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord, uh, uh, to record and to thank and to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. See, see, this was a something different than what was taking place in uh, Gibeon. Gibeon, if, if you remember, I just told you, Gibeon was a place where they offered the sacrifice, a burnt offering of sacrifice. Uh, uh, that was the uh, uh, on the altar of the uh, burnt offering that was given in Gibeon. But in Jerusalem, the Bible lets us know that Jerusalem, David assigned uh, Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord. They, he, he assigned them. He appointed them. Now listen, the Levites were to minister before the ark day and night, singing praises to the Lord. What sounds any different? Because over here they were offering burnt offerings and they were still offering uh, uh, sacrifices or praises. They were offering sacrifices to the Lord in uh, Gibeon, they were offering burnt offerings of sacrifice to the Lord uh, day and night. And here in Jerusalem, the minister, uh, uh, Levites were to minister before the ark of the Lord uh, night, excuse me, night and day singing praises to the Lord. When in Gibeon, they were offering sacrifices of bulls and goats, in Jer but in Jerusalem, Listen, they offer sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving continued to the Lord. Do you see the difference? One was a burnt sacrifice, bulls, right? They were offering the bulls over here in, in, in Gibeon. They were offering the bulls and they were offering the uh, goats in Gibeon, burnt sacrifices. But in Jerusalem, they were lifting up praise and sacrifices to the Lord through their worship, through their worship. Psalm uh, 69 verses 30 and 31 from the New American Standard Bible, it tells us this. David says, I will praise the name of God with a song and I and will magnify him with thanksgiving. 
This also shall please the Lord for better than an ox or a bullock that have horns and hoofs. Listen, David was saying over here in Jerusalem, in this tabernacle, we're going to praise the Lord. We're going to praise the name of the Lord our God. We're going to praise him with a song. We're going to magnify his name with thanksgiving. And this, when we do this, it's going to be more pleasing to the Lord. It's going to be better than the ox or the bullock that have horns and hoofs. See, David was a musician, and not only was he a musician, but he was a worshiper, and he knew that worship from his song of praise and thanksgiving, that worship would magnify the Lord more better or, or, or better than or greater than any ox or bull or anything that had horns and hoofs. Listen, God, I'm going to give you something that comes from me. It's coming from my heart. It's coming. It's flowing through my spirit, flowing from my heart. This is what's happening. It's going to flow flow from his heart and it's going to go into the heavens where God rails. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, many years later in the New Testament, James, you remember James, he's the half brother of our Lord Jesus. James, the brother of our Lord Jesus, he was debating with some of the church elders about uh, uh, God's plan for the Gentiles, you and I. God had a plan for us. And James was sitting there with some of the church elders because remember now, they didn't want us to be a part of what was going on. They thought they had this thing of Christianity on lock. They didn't, they didn't expect us to be able to receive what God had given. So listen, James was now, he was in a, a, a debating with some of the church elders and uh, it was about God's plan, God's plan for the Gentiles. And in the book of Acts, James says that when he, he uh, the Bible lets us know that James ends up quoting a prophecy that I believe would make his brother Jesus very proud of him. I believe when, when Jesus heard what James was saying, it probably put a smile on, Je on Jesus' face. What are you saying, overseer? I'm glad you asked. In the book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 16, from the King James Version, it reads this. It says, after this, Jesus is speaking, and he says, after this, I will uh, build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. Now, what, what Jesus is saying, listen, if you notice the language that he was speaking, our Lord Jesus, he didn't say, I will build again the tabernacle of Moses. No, he didn't say that. Why? Because the tabernacle of Moses dealt with what? If the burnt offering, it was the, the, the horns and the hoofs, it was the bulls and the goats, it was that type of sacrifice. Jesus said, listen, I'm not going to build that, 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 that uh, uh, tabernacle again. I'm not going to do that. You don't have to do that. What? So what is he saying? He said, I'm going to, uh, 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 in verse 16, he says, after this, I will return and I will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build it up again, the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. Jesus is telling us this. This is, this is where uh, um, James heard this and James started speaking a prophecy. What was the prophecy? Listen, the Lord didn't say he was going to rebuild the tabernacle of Moses. And we understand now why. But he said, no, I will build the tabernacle again, and it's going to be the tabernacle of David. What makes David? What's, what's this about David? What is he saying? It tells us that we're supposed to have uh, what, what Jesus is saying is that this is what's supposed to happen in our uh, church houses today. This is what's supposed to happen in our sanctuary today. This is what's supposed to happen in the tabernacles and the places where we go to worship today. What is he saying? He said that in the places where we go to worship today, our house of worship should be a place of unending praise in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There, there should be unending praise when you walk into the sanctuary, when we're leaving the sanctuary, this is what Jesus is saying. Listen, when our sanctuary lines up like this, when it lines up uh, 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 like what Jesus is saying, then we, hallelujah, glory to God, then we will usher us into a, a, a higher, a more glorious arena of life and ministry. Listen, when we do this the way Jesus expects us to do it, it's going to take us to another realm in worship. It's going to take us to another realm in God. We're going to be able to see what David had saw. Listen, it's not about presenting to the Lord uh, the burnt offering of the bulls and the goats. It's not about things that have horns and hoofs, but it's about what comes out of us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We build. Uh, listen, listen. Jesus says that he's going to set it up. Set up what? He's going to, uh, uh, when we worship the way David worshiped in the tabernacle that was set up 
in Jerusalem, not in Gibeon, but in Jerusalem, when we allow that type of worship to take place within us, in our sanctuaries, when we come in, listen, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're allowing the Spirit of God. It's going to usher us to a more higher level in Him, more higher, more glorious arena in every area of life and ministry. It's going to usher us into a place where we've never been before in the realm of God. It's going to bring us there. And as we build a living tabernacle, the Bible lets us know that that tabernacle will never be destroyed. Remember, Jesus said that the gates of hell shall not prevail. He can't stop you from worshiping. Nothing. I know, you know, people always sit there and say, well, you can't worship here. You, you can't. You, if, if Paul and Silas can worship in a prison, amen, what can stop you? What can stop us? What can separate us from the love of Christ? What can do it? Nothing. Nothing. So, so what he's saying is that our sanctuary, when our sanctuaries line up like the, like the, what David had, then when, when we're talking about in Jerusalem, not in Gibeon, but when our sanctuaries line up with what David had, then it's going to usher us into a higher, more glorious arena of life, a more higher, more glorious arena of ministry. We uh, uh, are going to see ourselves build up as a living tabernacle that will never be destroyed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Never be destroyed. Listen, did, did, you, did you hear that? If you didn't hear, let me press rewind and rewind it back for you again. Listen, we're supposed to be, you and I, Christians, saints, we're supposed to be the tabernacle of unending praise. Nothing should stop your praise. Nothing should stop your worship. If Paul and Silas found themselves in a prison and they worshiped and they praised God, what is your excuse? Oh, they put lashes on my back and they rejoiced because they went away believing they received the same stripes as our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can't let nothing steal your praise. You are the tabernacle of praise. Oh, what are you saying, overseer? Listen, I'm trying to tell you, we are, as Christians, we are to be the sanctuary. We are the tabernacle of unending praise. You're, 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 you remember um, when I opened up and I started telling you, I said, not your testimony, but mine. And I said, when the scales fell and I caught the revelation and I found out that I was revival and I learned how to energize my spirit. But the most important thing that I learned was that was revealed to me was that I am a tabernacle of praise. I am the tabernacle of praise. When I open my mouth, I make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. I lift up my voice unto the heavens. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, most, listen, 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 listen. As a Christian, that should be your testimony also. You know, I, like I said, I don't like to always say you should do these shoes. I, I'm, I, I hope I'm leading by example. And, I, and like I said, now you may want to share in that and say, yes, I am revival. You may share in that and say, I know how to energize my spirit. You may share in that and say, yes, I am the tabernacle of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because if you're a Christian, you should be. You should be a tabernacle of praise. You know, the scriptures tells us this. It tells us this. What are you saying? I'll get to that. Hold on. Listen to this. As a Christian, have you ever uh, got the revelation? Have you ever got a revelation that you're a tabernacle of praise in God's presence? You are the tabernacle of praise in God's presence. If you never knew that, then again, let me point you to the scriptures. Why? Because the Apostle Paul, he, he was uh, uh, talking to the Christian. Corinthian church, and he asked the Corinthian church a question. And in 1 Corinthians um, chapter 6, verse 19 from the New American Standard Bible, he asked a question, excuse me, from the King James Version. He asked a question. The question is, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 from the uh, King James Version, and it says, what? That's the question. What? Know you not, know ye not, that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have not of God, and ye are not your own. Listen, the Apostle Paul is letting us know that your body is not, do you not know 
that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is the temple. Your body is the sanctuary. Your body is the tabernacle. This is the place of the tent meeting. Amen. This is where the Lord called to meet with Moses. This is it right here. You are the housing of the ark. You house the, out, the ark of the covenant. It's in you. It's in you. It's in me as Christians. What? What? This is what Paul is saying. What? You not know? Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Do you not know that everywhere you go, you carry the spirit of the Lord with you? Do you not know that everywhere you go, God is in you? Do you not know that when you, whatever it is, you move you in your movements. You, uh, I live, I move, I have my, my being. The Lord is in me. Do you not know this? Listen, in the Old Testament, the children of Israel, uh, uh, they, 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 they transported, they took the ark of uh, uh, the presence of God from one place to another. Everywhere they carried the tabernacle of witness. That's what they would call it. The tabernacle of witness, the ark of the covenant, uh, the tabernacle the, uh, 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 is what it was that they were calling it. It's the tabernacle. So everywhere they went, they carried the tabernacle with them. And that represented the presence of God. So they always had to be reminded that the presence of God was in this place. Because we see the tabernacle. We see the Ark of the Covenant. We see it. So therefore, once we see that, we knew that God was there. Okay, now, you don't have that today. But do you see yourself as the Ark? Do you see yourself as the vessel? Do you see yourself as the uh, uh, tabernacle or the sanctuary that carries God? Everywhere you go, you're carrying God with you. Do you acknowledge that? Have you gotten that revelation yet that everywhere you go, you take God with you? Where is he at? He's within you. He dwells within you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, everywhere we go, the Bible tells us in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 9 from the uh, New American Standard Bible, it reads as such. It says this. There was nothing in the ark except the two tablets of stone, which Moses put there at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the sons of Israel when they came out of Egypt. Listen, the Bible specifically, it's telling us, it's making it plain that there was nothing in the ark save two tablets of stone, which Moses put there at Horeb. That's what was in the ark, the two tablets of stone. Some say now the staff of Moses is there and uh, the tablets of stone, that's the Ten Commandments. So you see that this is what was in the ark. So, so remember, Horb, uh, uh, that's the place where the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. When they were on the, they were out of the land of Egypt now and they were at Horb. And this is where the Lord made a covenant with them. He made the covenant with them. Uh, uh, no one knows where the ark is hidden today. Oh, some say, uh, uh, I hear some say that it's in Ethiopia, but we really don't know where in the world the ark is today. We don't know. But the thing about it is this. If they were to find the ark and they would open the ark today, they would see what was in the ark. They would find the, the uh, uh, staff of Moses. They would find the uh, tablets, which were the Ten Commandments. They would find that in the ark today if we knew where the ark was. But hallelujah, glory to God. We don't know where that physical ark is. Amen. But we do know as believers, we do know as Christians, we do know as followers of Jesus Christ where the ark of the covenant is today. Hallelujah, glory to God. The ark of God is in your heart. Why? Because that's where the word is. That's where the word of God is today. It should be in your heart. Hallelujah, glory to God. Where, where, where is the word of God? Listen, I have the word of God right here, but at the same time, if I don't have that present, if I don't have my Bible with me, I know some of us today, we have the electronic age and we say we have it on an app. We got Bible gateway. We got Bible this. We got, we got Bibles all over the place. But, but, the, but the thing about it is this, if you did not have that, glory to God, where would you find the word of God? Where's his word at? Where's his word? Where's his word? You know, this is why I'm telling you, you have to know that your heart, in your heart, this is where you believe and you confess Jesus, right? It was in your heart first, then out of your mouth, you spoke, you spoke. So this is what God is telling you also, that the word of God is in your heart. This is the word. And as you speak, 
You released that word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What are you saying, overseer? I'm glad you asked me. Do you remember um, uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33 from the New American Standard Bible? It reads as this. It says, For this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my law within them and write it on their heart. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Do you think God said something that did not come to pass? The only thing that did not come to pass as of yet is the second coming of Christ. But let me let you know something. God said this in the book of Jeremiah. David said it uh, in the uh, uh, Psalms. He said, thy word I have hid in my heart. Your word, Father, is in my heart. This was way before Jeremiah came on the scene. And God makes it more prevalent in the words of Jeremiah. He's saying, not just so that you don't sin against me, as David said, but God wants you to know this. He says that, for this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Listen. You may say, well, uh, uh, I wasn't there with the house of Israel. But when you became a believer, when you became a Christian, this applies to you now. When you began to pick up the God's holy writ and you began to read this word, when you began to study this word, to show yourself approved as a workman, when you began to try the word and test the word, when you began to absorb this word, when you began to digest the word of God, when you began to take hold of the word, then you'll see that God says, I will make a covenant with uh, uh, the house of Israel after this, declares the Lord. He said, listen, what's the covenant? He said, I will put my law within them and write it on their heart. And they, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Listen, God's word is written in your heart. If you did not have the resources to go back and grab the word, if you did not have your Bible apps on your electronic device, it should not matter because you should have been walking with the Lord long enough to know that the Lord, the word of the Lord is in your heart. And when you open your mouth, hallelujah, glory to God, you should speak the word of God. You should sound like God when you speak. That's how you should sound. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because if you say, well, I never knew I had the word of God in my heart. Now you do know. And if you say, well, I never believed that I had it, then you make God to be a liar. Because God says this. If you can claim yourself to be a Christian, this falls on you as the house of Israel. This falls on you. The Lord says, he declares that I will put my law within them and write it on their heart and I might be I should be. No, God says, I will be their God. And they, you and I, Christians, shall be my people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Listen, you, you may sit there and say, well, well, I don't know how that happened. When did it happen? When you became born again. When you, the day you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the word of God was already in your heart. That's why you had to have the faith to believe. You had to have the faith to believe it in your heart first. Then you confessed it out of your mouth. And then, now, when you pick up this word, the Holy Writ, when you pick up the word of God and you begin to uh, 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 take hold of this word, you begin to digest this word, you begin to study this word, you begin to, now the word gets a, a, a place within your heart. It's in you now. It's in you. And never forget this. Listen, when we were born again, we were born by the word of God. That's how we were born again. We, we, when we became born again, we became born again by the word of God. And not only that, hallelujah, glory to God, but we became one with the word because the word was flesh and dwelt among us. And because now we are one with God, hallelujah, you see, it, you can't separate this. If Christ is in you, he's within you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the complete fullness of the Godhead, it dwells within you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When we became a Christian, listen to this. When you became a Christian, when I became a Christian, when we became Christians, guess what happened? I'm glad you asked. We became living epistles. We became living epistles to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. What are you saying, overseer? I'm glad you asked me. Listen, in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 3, verses 2 and 3 from the New American Standard Bible, it speaks as this. It says this. 
the Apostle Paul was speaking to the Corinthian church, and he tells them this. He says, you are our letter, written in our hearts, known and read by all people, revealing yourselves that you are a letter of Christ, delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of of human hearts. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So do you see what just took place? Listen, you now have become a living epistle. You are an epistle because the word of God has been written on your heart. Hallelujah. In your heart, as the word says. It's been written in your heart, known and read by all people. People who don't read the Bible, they read you. Why? Because you proclaim to be a Christian. You profess to be a follower of Jesus. And they don't read the Bible, but they read you. And the words are on your heart. Now listen, revealing yourselves that you are, when you speak, you're revealing yourself that you are a letter of Christ delivered by us. Who's us? All the saints, this is what Paul wants us to know, is delivered by us. God wrote this on your heart. What do you mean God wrote it? He tells you, he says, it's written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. God wrote on in your heart. He wrote it in your heart. Not on tablets of stone, which Moses received back in Horeb. No, in Gibeon, remember, that's where it was. If you're looking at the covenant, that's what God wrote. He wrote it on the tablets. But today, hallelujah, glory to his name, it's not written on stone tablets, but it's written on human hearts. Hallelujah, glory to God. And this is what God wants us to see. We are the tabernacle of praise. We are what God expects us to be, living epistles, living the word, speaking the word, and, 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 and enjoying Everything that God placed here on the earth for us to enjoy through his word. Listen, whether or not you realize it, I'm here to shed some light in your dark world today. I want to let you know that as a Christian, you are now, if you never knew it before, you can sit there and, 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 and debate about it all day long. But once you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, as a Christian, you're now the living ark of testimony. And guess what? Because of that, you are also uh, the tabernacle of his presence. You're the tabernacle of God's presence. For you are the temple of the living God. God dwells within you, not in buildings made of man's hands, but he dwells within you in the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God has said that I will dwell in them. God said it. Not, not Overseer Armstrong. The Lord spoke and said, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's nothing you can do about it. Now, the devil is mad because he knows that now you know who you are. And he knows that if he took the Bibles away, this is why, you know, I, it bothers me when I see uh, 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 some of our uh, 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 crazy uh, uh, Muslim brothers and sisters, if somebody burned a Quran, they want to they wanna cut their heads off. You can destroy every Bible in the world. We got the word of God in our hearts. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it's not by accident. God purposely wrote it. This is what he tells us. He says, I wrote it in their hearts. I wrote it. Not, not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. This has been written in your heart. So, so, so it's not on tablets of stone, but it's on tablets of human hearts. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And and God said this, now, now that you become the living temple, now that you understand what God is saying, he says, listen, I will dwell in them, I will walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Hallelujah, glory to God. Is somebody excited about what God did for you, what he's doing for you. Listen. Whether or not you want to take ownership of it, God dwells in you. He dwells in you even right now as you're a Christian. God dwells in you. And his hands are your hands. And his legs, your legs are God's legs. His legs are your legs. Everywhere you go, you take God with you. He walks with you. He talks through you. He, he, you have the fullness of the Godhead dwelling within you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And everywhere you go, you need to think about that. How they carried the, uh, uh, the Ark of the Covenant. It took uh, 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 on, on on the poles of the staff. Everywhere they went, they took the presence of God with them. So they always could look over there and say, oh yes, 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 the, uh, uh, God is here. You should be more conscious of that now without seeing a thing and just knowing that God is there. Knowing now it should uh, 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 bring uh, 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 
remembrance to the words that you're about to speak, knowing that God is speaking through you, knowing that wherever you lay your hands, this is why believers can lay hands upon the sick and they come. You got the hands of God. You got the hands of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Not only, listen, listen, listen. Everywhere you go, you should be knowledgeable and knowing that you take in the presence of God with you everywhere you go. But you know, some people still don't understand that. They still look at this and say it's a mystery. How can they tell me that he's taking God with him everywhere he goes? I don't understand what he's saying. Listen, listen, listen. This is why some, some parts of the Jewish sect today, some of them consider us. Christianity, they say that we're a heresy. Some of them, they see us and they see us as a cult. They, they, they call us blasphemers. Why? Because their books are closed after Malachi. When they read Malachi, those blank pages that we have in our Bible, that's 400 years of silence. These uh, Some of the Jewish sect today, when they close their Torah after Malachi, it's it. So when we come to them and we talk to them about a New Testament, they say that we're blasphemers. When we come to them and we talk about a New Testament, they say that we are uh, 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 um, heresists. They say that we are uh, uh, members of a cult. Why? Because they don't believe that Jesus came to the earth yet. They're still waiting on the first coming. But hallelujah, glory to God. They're going to be in for a rude awakening when he comes the second time around again. Hallelujah, glory to his name. They believe that, that, that when they see that God is still silent because their book book closes at Malachi. But glory to God, we have one, maybe two blank pages. That's the 400 years of silence. Then we open up with Matthew. Hallelujah. And we start off with Zechariah in this temple. Listen, 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 listen. Some Jews still believe that God is silent. They believe that he's silent. But the New Testament that we have here today, it lets us see the birth of the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And because we have that, the mystery has now been solved. There's no longer a mystery to us. Why? Because the, the Jews, they can't explain what happened. But we can explain it because it's no longer a mystery. What are you saying, overseer? The Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 and 27 from the New American Standard Bible. And the Apostle Paul says this, To whom God will to make known what the wealth of glory, the wealth of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles is. The mystery is, the mystery that is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah, glory to God. This mystery has now been solved. Hallelujah, glory to God. What is the mystery? The, the mystery which has been from ages, it's been hidden from ages ago, from generations ago, but now has been made manifest through us, through the saints of God. And what is the mystery? The mystery is this, Christ in you, the hope of glory. We are the saints to whom God has made known what the riches of this glory, the, the mystery among the uh, uh, Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Listen, in the Old Testament, they didn't have that. That's why they closed the book at Malachi. They did not have what you and I have here today. They cannot share in what we're sharing in. So they call us blasphemers. They call us heresies. They call us cults. But we are followers of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we've been redeemed through the blood of the Lamb. This is why we are today what, 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 what we are are the a tabernacle of praise. We don't have to offer God a burnt offering with a uh, bulls and goats with hoofs and horns. No, we offer God a sacrifice of praise through our vessel. Hallelujah. Through the opening of our mouths, through the lifting of our hands, we, be, we become that continuous uh, uh, praise party that never ends. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, listen. You remember when uh, um, in the Old Testament when Solomon was preparing to dedicate the tabernacle to the Lord and, and Solomon said in um, 1 Kings chapter 8 verses 22 to 23 from the New American Standard Bible. It reads as this. It says, Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and he spread out his hands toward heaven, and he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping the covenant and showing faithfulness to your servants who walk before you with, the, with all their heart. Listen, the Bible tells us that Solomon, it said that he stood before the altar 
of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. And he spread out his hands. Solomon spread out his hands. Hallelujah. How many of you know that something happens when you lift your hands to God? Something happens when you lift your hands to God. So listen. Solomon stood before the, the, all the uh, uh, congregation, all the assembly, and he spread out his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is none like you in heaven above. There is none like him on the earth beneath. Hallelujah. And who keeps the covenant and keeps showing faithfulness to the servants who walk before you with all their heart. And today, hallelujah, glory to God. Solomon was preparing uh, uh, to dedicate the tabernacle. And today we have become that tabernacle. Hallelujah, glory to God. We are the tabernacle. Not the tabernacle of Moses. No, but we're the tabernacle of David. Why? Because we are the tabernacle of continuous praise. That's who we are here today. Listen, I don't know. I see time is moving. I got to hurry up and get out of here so that we can break bread at the Lord's table. But let me let you know this. I don't know who it was. Uh, uh, I don't think anybody knows who it was that wrote uh, Psalm 150. I don't know who it is, but I would love to believe it was David. Why? Because that Psalm tells us this. Uh, 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 Psalm 150 verses 1 through 6 from the New American Standard Bible. It says this. It says, praise the Lord. Praise the God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty expanse, praise him for his mighty deeds, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with the trumpet sound, praise him with the harp and, and lyre, praise him with the sim with trem uh, uh, excuse me, praise him with the tambourine and dancing, praise him with stringed instruments and flute, praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding symbols. Let everything that shall, everything that has breath shall praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen, I would love to believe that David wrote that. Why? Because David was a worshiper and he knew that we today are the tabernacle of praise. We are the unending tabernacle. We are continuously giving praise before the Lord for the things that he's done, for the things that he's uh, are doing right now, and for the things that we're hoping he's going to do later on down the road as we go on. We are the tabernacle of praise. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to be excited because we have a right to praise the Lord. Praise him. That's not just a, 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 a scripture. That's a command. That's a command that tells us to praise the Lord God. Praise him in his sanctuary. Hallelujah. Praise him for his mighty expanse. Praise the Lord our God, for there is nobody like him. Now listen, if you just joined us here and you got into the tail end of this and you don't know what all the excitement is about, we're praising the Lord because we found out that we are the tabernacle of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you're far from the tabernacle of praise. You're going somewhere down the road that you don't want to go. But now is your opportunity. If you can believe in it, listen, if you you didn't get your sacraments, get your sacraments because after we do this, after I extend this invitation to those that come to dine at the Lord's table, if you didn't get your sacraments, get it ready so we can break bread at the Lord's table. We don't want none to be left out. Amen. God prepared the table and he wants you to come to dine at his place. Amen. So this is what we're getting ready to do here in the next few minutes. But listen, for those of you who've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you can believe it in your heart that God sent Jesus into this world to die a sinner's death so that you can have eternal life, not separated from him, but eternal life in his presence. And that's you. And you're able to believe that in your heart and confess it out of your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Repent from your sins and turn from your wicked ways. Then you can be also become a child of the most high God. And if that's you and you've just done it today, we thank God for you. We thank God for you because, listen, you could have been on your way right now to a fiery grave. But you just by believing you didn't have to do anything other than believe it in your heart, confess it out of your mouth. Don't go back to doing what it was you, what you were doing. If you do that 360, you're going right back there again. But you do a 180, and that means that you're not going completely back around. You see that you made a mistake, so now you just go back there and you boom. You, you straighten it out and continue to walk and trust God. Amen? Amen. Listen, uh, uh, get your sacraments ready because I want to pray over those right now as we're getting ready to break. Break bread and we're going to, I got mine already prepared here. We're going to break bread at the Lord's table. We're going to bless God. We're going to uh, believe God for everything that God is doing in our midst today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Listen, if you have your sacraments, I want to pray over it right now. I don't know what it is that you brought to the table, but I want to believe God that what it is what God said it's going to be as we prepare to break bread at the Lord's table here today. Amen. 
Amen. So, Heavenly Father, we come right now, Lord, not in any form or fashion, but we come to answer the call to come to dine at your table. Father, you told us that we can do this in, as often as we do it, do it in remembrance of you. So right now, Lord, as we're coming to do this in remembrance of you, we're asking that you will uh, touch this sacrament, Lord, that the bread will no longer be bread, but it will be the body of Christ, that the juice, the wine will no longer be that, Lord, but it will be the blood of Jesus. And Father, right now, we're asking that you will supernaturally touch these uh, uh, sacraments, Lord, that as we receive them into our vessels, Lord, we will have done that which you have uh, asked of us to do in remembrance of you. So touch these sacraments now, Lord, before they enter into our vessels, that it shall be that which you called it to be. In Christ Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen again. Amen. All right. So listen, as you know, we're going to read this from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26, and it lets us know this. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may eat. The scripture says, In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. You may drink. The Bible lets us know that after they had um, ate and drank, they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. And you know we've got six months left of this year. And the only thing I can hear in my spirit is, We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in His holy word. For He's never failed me yet. And we sing, oh, 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 can't turn around, cause we come this far by faith. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in His holy word. For he never failed me yet. And we sing, oh, 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 can't turn around. We come this far by faith. Oh, 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 oh can't turn around. For we come this far. By faith. Heavenly Father, watch over these, your children, as we leave this place, but never from your presence. Father, we know that we've only come this far, and it's only leaning on you. Father, you brought us this far by faith. And by you brought us, Father, you've allowed us to know that we are the tabernacle of praise. Father, we can't do anything without you, Lord, but with you, we are more than conquerors. And we just thank you right now, Lord, as we praise your name. We praise you with the trumpet sound. We praise you with the harp and the lyre. We praise you with the tambourine and dance, and we praise you with the string instruments. We praise you, Father, with the flutes. We praise you on loud cymbals. We praise you with resounding cymbals. We say everything, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Father, your name is great and your children are blessed because of it. And those of you right now, listen, this year is almost over, but we still got some time left. Get busy about doing what you said you were going to do for the Lord. And you watch God show up in your life like no other before. I know some of you right now have probably been dealing with some sicknesses and some ailments. I just want to pray for you right now. And, and, and listen. Ah, thank you. Father, right now we cancel every assignment of the enemy that comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I speak to every suicidal spirit right now that's hovering this atmosphere. You've been rebuked by the blood of Jesus. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. Every suicidal spirit right now, return to the pit of hell in the name of Jesus. Touch not the anointed of God and do his prophets no harm in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak healing right now into the vessels of these your children. You said by faith, believers shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. 
cover. And it is by faith now that I stretch my hand to touch these bodies right now, Father. Those are bodies that have been racking with pain, Lord, that the healing shall be manifested within them, not in an afterlife, but while they're in the land of the living, that they may share their testimony of how great you are. Cause the doctors to look and marvel, not at modern medicine, but at the healing touch of Jesus Christ, which can do all things but fail. We bless you and we praise you now. Father, I pray right now that you will show up in somebody's finances, Lord, that you will make a way where they saw no way. Touch them that they may be a blessing, Lord. Touch them that they will receive a blessing to be a blessing in the name of Jesus. Do for them what they cannot do for themselves, Lord, that as they go forward from this day forward, that they shall give a testimony that will shock the world about how great you are. Do it, Father, not in the next six months of this year, but do it today. In Christ Jesus' name we say, amen. Amen and amen. All right, my brothers and sisters, listen, as we go through the rest of this week, as we go through the rest of this month, as we go through the rest of this year, don't you forget to make time for God because God has truly made time for you. Amen. Amen. If you're being blessed by the words from Manna from Heaven Ministries and would like to give a donation, please give to the following links. Thank you and may God richly bless you.